Hi, this is Nicole Kupchik and welcome to 10 Minute Tidbits. Today, I'm here with Joel Green and we are going to chat about a brand new vasopressor. Yeah. This we is haven't super had a exciting. lot over the last few years. So. A lot. We haven't had any. Right. Right? This is crazy. Yeah. So I've been a nurse 25 years. Uh, we're going on 17 for me. Yeah. And you know, it's so funny. I talked to a nurse, and I've never seen a new vasopressor. And I talked to a nurse who's been a nurse for 44 years. So hey, Narda, if you're yeah. listening. Um, and she had never seen a new vasopressor. So this yeah. is kind of exciting. Yeah. So uh, it was August. It's almost exactly a year ago. So August of 2017 there was a study published called Athos 3. So Athos 3 um, was a study that was uh, evaluating a brand new vasopressor in the use of distributive shock. So if you can imagine vasodilatory shock. And uh, so kind of exciting. So, um, so guess what the vasopressor is? Well, most of our vasopressors have all been catecholamine response. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. been our only way to really treat hypotension yeah. and shock. Um, what's interesting is the method of action on this one uses a completely different system. Completely different. It's the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And from nursing school, we all love learning about renin angiotensin 2. Yeah. So basically, we're giving angiotensin 2. So what have you spent your entire career doing with angiotensin 2? Uh, reducing it. Blocking yes. it, right? We're in heart failure. trying to block it in every way we can. Yeah. And so kind of crazy. So in heart failure, we block, we use ACE inhibitors or ARBs to block angiotensin 2 because it's a potent vasoconstrictor. But now, why didn't someone think of this earlier? Right. Like, exactly. I'm like, hello? Why yeah. didn't anyone think of this? Yeah. Crazy, right? right? Especially in so 44, 20 years, you know? Yeah, so. who knew? Okay, so who knew? But anyway, so kind of a cool study. So uh, what it was, was uh, it was called the Athos 3 trial. They enrolled 344 patients, and about half got the study drug, and about half got placebo. So here's how it was set up. So imagine you've got a patient who's in distributive shock. Most of the patients were septic. I think they had a couple that had vasoplegic shock yeah. coming off cardiopulmonary bypass. Right. But um, they had a, a vasodilatory distributive shock, and they all already had to have fluid resuscitation if they were septic, so that had to happen. They And they also had to be on a vasopressor, so they had to be on a norepinephrine or norepi equivalent right. vasopressor. And then what they did is um, they could enroll patients in the first 48 hours mm -hmm. on this study. So imagine you've got a background vasopressor of, most yeah. patients got norepinephrine, some had norepi and vasopressin, and then they added either the study drug or placebo. And so what they had to do was during the first three hours that they started the study drug is they had to quickly adjust up on whatever they were given to see if the um, map got above 75 or they saw a 10 millimeter of mercury increase in the mean arterial pressure. Yeah. So the purpose of the study was purely to do what? To look at the vasopressor. To, nah. Yeah, to prove yeah. it was a vasopressor. Right. That was the purpose of the study. Is this medication truly indeed mm. a vasopressor? Right. And what did they find? They found that it does work. Yes, which it is. is. Good. So kind yeah. of exciting, yeah. And in fact, 70% of the patients who were given the study drug, which is now called Giapreza um, or angiotensin 2, so 70% of those patients uh, reached their goal endpoint within five minutes. Yeah. So so crazy. So it was very clear it is indeed a vasopressor. And then and that was the purpose of the study, just to prove it was a vasopressor. And then one of the things they did was they really reported any adverse reaction at all that they uh, saw right and um, you know and there, again it wasn't powered to really answer the question of yeah. you know what adverse events are gonna be associated with this medication but uh, I think one of the things that stood out were thromboembolic events right. there's so, a risk for DVT with this yeah yeah so or just thromboembolic events in general yeah. and so um, it doesn't necessarily need to be deep vein. It could be superficial or deep vein, so it could be either. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, just make sure your patient's on DVT prophylaxis, which they should be anyway. Yeah. But it's interesting when you do actually, like, look and see, like, we think patients are on DVT prophylaxis, but then when you actually look to see how many are actually on DVT yes. prophylaxis, right? Or the nurse dose of a not given because it was a 5 a.m. or 1 a.m., yeah. So anyway. Right. I will stop there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So kind of interesting. But um, so I don't know. I'm excited. Right. Because we, like you said, we have thrown catecholamines at patients for mm -hmm. years. So you know, dopamine was like all the shiz, right? right? Was. You know. 
was, yeah. you know, it was. And then and we were we used to call norepinephrine leave a fed, leave, leave him, him dead. dead. Yeah. Why? Why do we call him leave him dead? Because we waited too long to use the yes, drug. Yes, it was, was like last ditch yeah. effort. It's like, oh, you're you're circling the drain. Right. We've called the funeral home, but yeah. let's try this let's just try this in case, drug. right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. Like that way it doesn't. Yeah. Exactly. The other interesting thing with this study too is they used a sofa scoring, uh, which is yes. sequential organ failure, um, to look at to see it was a part of their adverse reporting. So does this improve their overall sofa scores? And they found out that there was a drastic improvement yeah. because we raised the map to save organs. Yeah. So in the cardiovascular portion of the sofa score, absolutely there was an improvement. And um, the other thing they found in the study is they were able to decrease the background vasopressor. So they were actually able to get patients weaned down on their epinephrine. Yeah. So a couple questions you guys might have. What's the half-life of the drug? One minute. So it's super quick on, super quick off. So it's, it's quick on, quick off. Um, it's dosed in nanograms per yeah, kilogram. Yeah, which is per always minute. weird for nurses. We get to micrograms yeah. and we're like, I'm kind of okay. And then we get to nanograms, especially with like, like, ibuprofen and things like that. We're yeah, like, like um, well, no, I don't do nanograms. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. but yeah, so it's nanograms per kilogram per minute. It, the dose usually is like 20 to 80, mm -hmm. kind of 40 would be a nice mid range. Um, I always get the question, do you have to have a central line? The answer is yes, yes. it's recommended. And you should also have an arterial line recommended because yeah. of your titrating vasopressors. Yeah, you know, um, but they just, for um, the FDA approval, they recommended a, definitely a, a central line. Yeah. So, okay. Um, anything else we wanted to mention? So, the way you think about things is for years we used catecholamine mm -hmm. and we had vaso, um, arginine vasopressin um, activation, and now we've just got another way to augment blood pressure. So, this would be by utilizing the RAS system. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of excited. I'm excited for it too. I think it's going to have a lot of effect over the coming years, and we're going to learn a lot more about the drug as yeah. more patients are enrolled in the study. I mean, that's one of the things that happens. We find the initial adverse effects and then later on we see on TV, you know, where it's like, this will be subject to blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But well, we, I mean, the study's done. Right. Like, this we, is it. Yeah. The yeah. more patients that get exposed to the medication, yeah. the more um, optimal we find out that how it works, what it yeah. does, and we have to find out more if there are more adverse effects that we didn't see. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think it would be interesting if they did a registry mm -hmm. or, you know, just to kind of figure out, yeah. you know, what are we seeing long term. But um, but it is available and um, it was available as of December. So one of the crazy things is they weren't expecting to get FDA approval until like February mm -hmm. and they got expedited approval because of the flu season that we had last yeah. winter. So that was kind of interesting. And then the other thing is it got... A full FDA approval. So a lot of people thought it was going to initially get approved as a right. secondary vasopressor, but the FDA gave full clearance for it. Which is nice because that means you can use it as a first line defense. Yeah, yeah. you can. I, I think the company, um, from what I understand, right. is recommending you know use it as a second line yeah. to get comfortable with it. But the indication is actually for full. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So any other things you want to add? No, I'm just excited yeah. to start using it. Excited. So think about again. This it's um the it's angiotensin two and it's used approved for distributive vasodilatory shock state. So kind of exciting. Yeah. All right. Well, stay tuned. And I'll put the reference for the study um, in the show notes. But I'm Nicole Kopchik. This is Joel Green. And this is 10 Minute Tidbits.